Hello to everybody. My name is uh, Joanna Wolszczak Derlacz. I'm from Gdańsk University of Technology, and I'm very happy that I will present you a paper that I'm co author of. And the title of the paper is Global Value Chains uh, and Labor Markets Wages, Employment, or both. Input Output Approach. Uh, this is the co-work with my colleague Sabina Szymczak uh, from the same uh, Gdańsk University of Technology in Poland. And the research has been conducted within the project of National Science Center Poland. So uh, what are the motivation of our study? Is to better understand the nexus between global value chain times and labor market as a whole. We do not take into account only wages or employment job destruction or job creation, but we want to find the conclusion for the whole labor market. And we uh, differentiate global value chain ties from the traditional trend. And what is also important, we take into account not only the participation, but also the position along the chain. So uh, what is the value added of the paper? We use the indexes of the participation in global value chains based on the decomposition of production or value added, not the decomposition of export, and uh, derived from Wangwei Yu and Su 2017A, 2017B. Uh, and they, uh, they indexes, uh, they are robust to changes in industrial aggregation and they correct the bias of traditional indexes uh, which do not take into account important channels of global value chains. Uh, uh, the previous studies, as I already said, look usually from one of the perspectives. AD wages, bulk matter, and some other studies, and or from employment, growth of the employment or job destruction or job, uh, or job uh, creation. And what are the consensus from the previous study? For example, as far as the wages are concerned, usually in some recent data and uh, meta data analysis, it is said that the overall economic significance of the effect is not, not large. Uh, and in the recent studies, uh, as I already told you, it's important not only to take into account the participation in global value chains, but also the position, how far from the beginning or from the end of the chain you are. And it can also impact the final results that uh, on the final effect on the labor market. Uh, so we have the data from the World Input Output Database released 2016, 43 countries. We divide them into middle income. We have uh, 56 sectors, manufacturers and manufacturing and services. And we have uh, some derived from the World Input Output Database, not only the indexes for our global value chains, but also the uh, the the the. Um, uh, the dependent variables, wages as, uh, uh, as labor compensation per total hours work, or employment, or lab, rather labor demand, total hours work divided by total number of persons engaged. We have also some additional uh, country specific uh, or sector specific uh, variables uh, connected also with the uh, wage setting mechanisms, wage bargaining shames. And then the production, uh, the decomposition of the production activities, it's looked either from the forward linkage um, perspective, producer perspective, when the value added is decomposed into domestic value added, trade value added, so the traditional trade, so the value added embodied in the final product export, and in the value added due to the global value chains, which is the production of value added embodied in the export of intermediate goods and services. And we can also look from the perspective of the backward linkage. When we look from the user perspective, so we have the domestic production consumed in domestic market, domestic production embodied in export of final products, and also the domestic and foreign value added intermediate imports. Then we have the participation index 
either from looking from those two perspectives, forward or backward linkages. So for the forward, back, forward linkages, it answered the question what percentage of production factors employed in a country sector has been involved in cross-country production sharing activities. And from the backward perspective, what percentage of final product produced by a country sector that comes from the global value chains activities. Here you see some statistics. As you can see here, the domestic value added, left axis, and then on the right axis, the red line showing the traditional trade in final goods without crossing the border of the uh, production and in global value chains as you can see here we have some uh, drop in the, the years of the of the crisis and then you see here the changes in 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 those uh, indexes between 2000 and 2014 this is based on the forward linkages and as you can see the domestic the, the decrease in the value added of the domestic uh, and then you see the um, except mine increase in the value added due to the trade and for all different uh, aggregation of the of the sectors we have increased in value added of global value chains then we also have other indexes connected with the length of the chain and also the position the relative position which is the ratio between forward looking the length and backward looking length and higher the index the more upstream is the country sector further from the final consumption here you see some a graph showing the average production length backward and production length forward. As you can see, for example, China, which has the long chain, either looking from the backward or forward perspective. Then finally, we come to the model specification. So we have two regression, which we uh, which we are going to estimate simultaneously. The first one is the wage regression. On the right hand side, we have the product activity, employment, trade, global value participation, and position in global value chains. And then employment, and we, mm, on the right hand side, the lack levels of productivity of wages of the traditional trade, or participation in global value chains, and position. And uh, finally, the results. Uh, for the wage regression, the upper parent, and for the employment, the lower, as you can see, some differences. First of all, for the trade, for the backward linkages, it is in case of the wage regression, it is positively correlated. In case of the forward linkages, it is negatively. The participation, is it negatively correlated? Either we end position, either we take backward or forward linkages. And for the employment, for the employment, we have the positive correlation between, between trade and employment. And for the participation, negative if we take into account backward linkages and positive if we take into account forward linkages and the position is negatively correlated. Then we divide the countries into middle income and high income countries. And there are also some differences showing that for the high income countries, the negative correlation are either uh, smaller in the magnitude or for example trade is positively correlated with the wages and here also the similar uh, results then we also divide the um, sectors into manufacturers and services and what we find that manufacturers are more hit so the channels it's it's quite reasonable uh, through which uh, it is observed that results for the final labor markets are rather coming from the manufacturing sectors here you see the results on the one graph of the wage regression and on the employment regression so it's easier to to compare the coefficient we are interested mainly in and we do also some extension and robustness so first of all we divide workers along the uh, skills high, medium, low skilled, and we found that uh, the workers that are more uh, influenced by the global value chains are those either with medium or low skills. Then we also um, find some non-linearities. So we also uh, we have the extension in our analysis when we take into account not only the relative position, but we take into account the length and it's square to all to, to, to check 
whether the smell curve is observed. We conduct dependence of sectors, heterogeneity, country heterogeneity. We take into account also more variables at the sector or on the country level. And in most of the cases, the results are quite robust. So the conclusions, so global value chain position is negatively correlated both with wages and employment. The negative association between a global value change participation and wages is both for backward and forward linkages. For the employment, we have the negative correlation between backward linkages and positive forward linkages. Global value chains and trade uh, are less beneficial to middle-income countries than to high-income countries. Manufacturing are more hit, and the effect of global value chains and traditional trade is different. Okay, thank you very much for your attention. I'm very happy that you can hear my presentation and the uh, our and uh, our um, our work. Hope that one day we'll be able to um, see personally. Thank you very much once again. Goodbye.